we are going to be reading A Bike Like Sergio's. This is written by Mary Beth Boltz, illustrated by Noah Z. Jones, and published by Scholastic Incorporated. As we read, I want you to think about the main character, Ruben, and um, maybe see if you can make some connections to you. What would you do if you were in a similar situation? Every kid has a bike but me. Sergio rides his new one while I run alongside, out of breath. Ask your parents again, Sergio says. Your birthday's coming. Sergio forgets there's a difference between his birthday and mine. I wish, I say, but I know that wishes won't make money appear. At Sunny's grocery, Sergio buys a, a pack of football cards. I stand in line, mad, with the bread my mom wants, waiting behind the lady in the blue coat who we see all the time. She steps up to pay and gathers her bags. In the shuffle, her purse tips. A dollar floats to the floor. No one sees. I scoop up the money fast. She's at the door, but I don't chase her. It's just a dollar. At home, mom's feeding the baby. The twins pull pans from the cupboard. My Reuben, she says, was it a good day? I nod and act busy. That dollar in my pocket stays a secret. Later, when I'm all alone in my room, I fish out the crumpled bill and stare. It's not one dollar, or five, or ten. It is one hundred dollars. My hands are shaking. That money is enough for a bike like Sergio's. Then I won't have to run. I'll be riding. Dad gets home from work late and tucks in my little brothers. When he gets to me, I squeeze my eyes shut and stay still as a stone. In the morning, the hundred dollar bill is safe in my backpack. When I get to school, Mr. Grady says we will be learning about money and math. He sets up a store with fake bills and coins and pictures of things we can buy. I joke around and blow all my play money on a camera right away. Me on my bike is all that I can think about. We stop at the bike shop after school. Inside, I walk the rows and find one like Sergio's, but silver. Man, you look good on it, Sergio says, and it's true. But I know if I ride home on a bike like that, I'll have to tell my parents where I got the money. I'll talk to them tonight, I say. And Sergio high-fives me. At home, Mom is making a grocery list for Saturday. She walks her fingers through the cash in her wallet. Then she crosses things off. Maybe next week, she says. She looks up at me and smiles. Me with a hundred in my backpack. Her crossing things off. Then she hands me a $5 bill. On your way home tomorrow, could you pick up orange juice at Sunny's? When she mentions Sunny's, I feel the sweat. What if the lady in the blue coat is there? I take my stuff to my room, dump my papers out of my backpack, and that's when I see it. The zipper that was closed is open just enough, and the money that was there is gone. Heading out the door, I mumble to mom, I'll be right back. Rain is falling as I retrace my steps from school to bike shop to home. Leaves and money look the same. Rain and tears feel the same. It's nowhere. I walk hunched and draggy to school the next day while Sergio rides circles. My brother built a ramp in the alley and I went airborne, he says. If you get that bike, you can use it. I don't tell Sergio that I won't be getting any bike at all. The day stretches out. How many nickels in a dollar? Mr. Grady asks. How many quarters in a five dollar bill? When the bell rings, I pack my backpack with homework and notes and tell Sergio to ride home without me. With everyone crowding in a hurry, I spot something. The smallest zipper inside is still closed. This was the pocket, not the other. I slid it open and I am rich again. To get that bike, I have to tell. I race to Sunny's as fast as riding and rush to the back of the store for the juice. Someone bumps me, apologizes in a soft voice, and I turn. My feet are frozen, watching as the lady in the blue coat makes her way to the counter with her eggs. She reaches into her purse, and like a hot blast, I remember how it was for me when the money that was hers, then mine, was gone. 
I leave the juice behind and this time I follow her. She walks down one street, then another, and past the bike shop. My mouth is dry. Excuse me, I say. She turns and we are face to face. I breathe fast and the words bust loose like they've been waiting. The lady says, yes, she lost a hundred dollars and has been looking since. She tips her head. Why? I uncurl my fist. I found it, I say, holding it out to her, still folded. Her voice changes from surprised to joyful to soft. She takes my hand in both of hers like a sandwich and asks my name. Thank you, Reuben, she says. You have blessed me. I am happy and mixed up, full and empty with what's, with what's right and what's gone. At home, everyone is waiting, and the lost and found story is mine to tell. What you did wasn't easy, my dad says, setting his hand on my shoulder. But it was right. My mom pulls me close. We're so proud, she says. And in that warm house with my family all around and my birthday almost here, I am proud too. The end.